Shalom. Kon Halimna Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Kon Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. A hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. So the beloved apostle Tahar deemed this year the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. And it was very spiritual that he coined that phrase in regards to this year. And I want to go into why. Let's get right to the key point here. This is an article that I came across where this woman is talking about Pluto transitioning from Capricorn to Aquarius. Now, we're not to delve into astrology. These are some of the gifts that we're going to be able to tap into in the kingdom, analyzing the stars and studying the stars. So I'm not going to try to go too deep beneath the surface. I want to get to the key point here. Because most, most of this is just babble. But here's the article, because I don't get into this stuff, but for edification purposes as to how things relate to Jacob's trouble, that's the segment that I want to target. That's the title and name of the article. Let's get to the key point here. <clears throat> what does it actually mean? Pluto is moving into Aquarius. And this is what we have been teaching Specifically, Elder Apostle Tahar coining this year, coining the term, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. See, look at this. Look at this. This is amazing. This year, large-scale societal matters associated with rebellion and revolution. <coughs> you can't make that up. Let's read it again. This transitory phase, rec it represents large-scale societal matters associated with rebellion and revolution, along with scientific breakthroughs. So artificial intelligence transhumanism is at the forefront. So the elite are looking to expand these advancements in merging man with machine. And this transitory phase also is very famous for the fall of the Roman Empire. So it's a notable transition that occurs every 248 years. It was notable during the fall of the Roman Empire. And it also represents unveiling darkness and shedding light. So this is a period of Yahushai coming back onto the scene that we're entering into. We're moving into that phase. <clears throat> so when the planet of transformation gets tangled up with Subversive, subversive Aquarius. We should expect radical dismantling. Jacob's trouble. <laughs> Extraordinary developments that may change life as we know it. Futuristic and forward thinking. Pluto in Aquarius may yield everything from new governmental structures to flying cars. Now, we've been seeing chariots 
multiple sightings per day, these so-called UFOs. So this is not literal flying cars. And this is why the truth in the Bible is the document by which to obtain knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Not astrology and paganism. So the Bible talks about the chariots of the Lord appearing and showing themselves in the last days. So a car is a what? A transport vessel or a chariot, the <clears throat> so-called UFOs. <clears throat> but will it be a utopian paradise or a dystopian hellscape? The salvation is for the elect of Israel. That is the new phase. <clears throat> Jacob, the Bible says in Second Ezra 6 and 9 that Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. <clears throat> Here's something else that stood out to me. It said that Pluto will be in Aquarius from January to September of this year. And September is a high holy, well, the seventh month is a high holy month, which really set these pagans is changing that to a different word based on the Latin. Sep means seven. But the seventh month is a very high holy month, along with the first month of March. So there's a lot of... <clears throat> Enchantment going on in this time frame. And let me tell y'all something too. Y'all out there with your fuck shit. With your bullshit. With the shenanigans and the hocus pocus. But baby they're about to do the biggest ritual. Because they know Pluto is going in Aquarius. And they know that energy is shifting. It ain't no coincidence baby. That the Super Bowl is Sunday. Mardi Gras is Tuesday. And Valentine's Day is Wednesday. Baby they gonna harvest up some energies from you clowns. Playing around with them. Oh. So our energy should be focused on meditating on Bible prophecy. This is a part of dwelling in a safe place. There's all types of black magic and enchantment is going on at high levels. Check this out. <laughs> Medical advancements. Technological technological advancements, breakthroughs. So this is scientific breakthroughs. So this is where artificial intelligence is the way ahead for the elite. So these are just some key things that stood out to me. So it transitioned from the goat or Capricorn. So this goat <laughs> represents... It is a pagan symbol for the wicked elite. <clears throat> Let's go here to the book of Daniel. Daniel 8. And uh, it's very spiritual that Elder Kassop from the D.C. camp mentioned. If you want to be a part of this society, you got to kiss the goat. Another Masonic term is ride the goat. So it goes back to the Edomites under the Greeks, more specifically, Alexander the Greek. <clears throat> Daniel 8 and 8. <clears throat> Therefore, the he goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. The four generals under Alexander the Greek, like Lycomatius, Cassander, Seleucus, Ptolemy. So these are signs of the power behind the Edomite authority. <clears throat> verse 21. Let's go to verse 20. The ram which thou sawest having two horns 
are the kings of Media and Persia. Because we know Alexander the Great took down the Medo-Persian Empire. Verse 21. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. So this was the start of the planting of the Edomite stronghold, their power structure. That's why they still use the term today, if you want to make it in this society under the wicked global elite, you got to either kiss the goat or ride the goat. Now, kiss the goat means worship, under the worship or worshiping under this construct, under the Edomites, the wicked. So there's a power shift toward the woman. And notice the woman is pouring out water. The woman in the scriptures represent the children of Israel, the 12 tribes. And this is why we have to be grounded in the scriptures. Not this, not pagan stuff or Greek mythology. But when it talked about turmoil and tumult, it reminded me of the scriptures. Remember the wicked global elite, they have left-hand side wisdom. So, so the year, a hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. <coughs> Let's go to Matthew 24. So really, Yahweh Shai is that light that's shedding knowledge because that Pluto represents unveiling or disclosing or revealing light, which really Yahweh Shai is that light, not no day of Pluto. And this is why we have to be grounded in the scriptures. Matthew 24, let's go to verse 6. See, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So this is a time that we're moving into a hopeful year of Jacob's trouble of turmoil, tumult, violence, confusion, chaos. See, an extremely rare and life-altering transit. Old programs are outdated and outdated, no, old programs and outdated structures are now being deconstructed. Preparation for a magnificent collective reset and restructure. Truths are being revealed and we are reclaiming power. So the only truth is the doctrine of the Bible. That's it. So Yahweh Shai is shedding light on the world. That's what's happening. He is the light, not Pluto. <clears throat> See, Luke 12, verse 2. And there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. So this is a time that they call the unveiling or light being shown. The light of the world and the wisdom of the universe is through Yahweh Shai. He is revealing things through his spirit. <clears throat> See, Yahweh Shai talked about these things that we read here. Where was it? See, associated with rebellion, revolution, scientific breakthroughs, medical advancements, technological advancements. So this is a time frame that Things are speeding up, expediting 
the ushering in of the new age. But that's what the elite think, that this reset is for them. But through the Holy Scriptures, we know that the reset is things moving into place for the establishment of Jacob's kingdom, the Israelites. The Bible says Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So they're going to be destroyed by the work of their own hands, their technology, their science, their warfare, their nuclear capabilities. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think that was a key point there. So this woman transitioning from the Capricorn or the rough goat to the woman is a transition of an age from Esau, Edom to the calmly and delicate woman, which is the nation of Israel, Jacob. Let's just do this. See, captive. daughter of Zion. See, Isaiah 52 and 1. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. The other nations... Edomites, followed by the other nations. See, verse 2. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Jacob, Israel. See? So that is the real <laughs> liberty. Freedom, deliverance, the nation of Israel, the Israelites. Water represents life and knowledge. <clears throat> so this is a transitory period from one age to the other, which the Bible says in Second Ezra 6 and 9 that Esau is the end of the world, Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. See, look at this highlighted here. It says, life as we know it, it is radically changing. We have reached a turning point. Our planet is resetting and recalibrating. By the end of this transit, our societies, ourselves, will be totally unrecognizable. Now, this is pagan. But when you read the Bible, we're going to be changed. Put on thy beautiful garment. Put on thy strength. The Israelites are going to be immortal. So the change, the salvation, the deliverance is for the daughter of Zion. The captive daughter of Zion. I know you see it. I think it's First uh, Corinthians. <clears throat> well, there's several we can go to. Let's see what pops up. Now well, we'll go to Philippians. Let's go there. <clears throat> Philippians three. Let's jump down. Philippians 3, verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord, Yahweh HaMashiach, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to, even to subdue all things unto himself. 
So this is the change. But it comes through violence, through a tumult, <clears throat> birth pains. So this symbol here that supposedly represent Pluto, really the light of the world, is Yahawashai, or son of man. Yahawashai Hamashiach, the deliverer, the anointed one. So the scriptures is where all the answers are. And once again, Elder Apostle Tahar named this year the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. And I highlighted here, rebellion, revolution, scientific breakthroughs, medical advancements, technological achievements. Expect radical dismantling to occur. We read that in Matthew 24. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. This also represents a period of things being revealed or unraveled or light being shed. <clears throat> and not the Bible say, <clears throat> let's go here to Daniel 12, Daniel 12, verse 4. But now, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and from and knowledge shall be increased. So you can take a note right now, packed with history, prophecy, packed with scripture interpretations. Send that note halfway across the world. It can go viral and have over 20 million views in five minutes or less. So technolog technological advancements, scientific advancements, knowledge moves further and faster over a shorter span of time. So the time is even being sped up. Let's go here and we'll close out here. <clears throat> Uh, right here Matthew 24 and 21 for then shall be great tribulation now this happened in 70 AD but it's going to happen again everything comes back around full circle Matthew 24 and 21 for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. To this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. See? So the scriptures have the full truth. This right here can be a snare if we're not grounded in the scriptures. <clears throat> and the Son of Man is going to return on the scene pursuant to Matthew 24, Isaiah chapter 11. There's several scriptures that we can pull. <clears throat> And 2nd Ezra 13, verses 29 through 31, that he's going to be revealed in the last days. So he is that light. And his spirit has already been apportioned out to the elect men, followed by the men, women, and children underneath the teachers. <clears throat> and it's, he's going to physically manifest himself in his due time according to the Most High's will. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Bashem Let's read this real quick. Fair use. Fair use act of 
1976. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. All y'all who make it preparation for the Super Bowl, there will be harvesting energy. The ritual at the halftime will be a black magic ritual. Then they're going to turn around and put the magic on y'all for Mardi Gras. And then turn around and put the magic on y'all for Valentine's Day because all those holidays is for them. They set that up so you got to actually say, why are they setting up all these holidays? Because it ain't beneficial to us. All those holidays do is drain us financially. Mm, spiritually, most importantly. That's how we're being drained spiritually if we're not meditating on the scriptures day and night. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to you. How about she? How about she? Barack Thumb. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Pam Yosharala and the Bible Bob. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.